In the early hours of May the 30th, 2012, a young lady's vehicle ran out of gas on a residential street in North Knoxville, and three good Samaritans would come to her aid. Before the sun had risen, two were dead, and an unborn child's life was taken before it ever got the chance to live. The suspect would be tracked down swiftly, brought to trial, and sentenced to 30 years in prison, but the story was far from over. The three are among the 1,980 innocent victims killed by alcohol-impaired drivers in 2012. For most, the memories of these individuals have faded. While the world continues to turn, the families of the victims will never forget their loved ones or the individual who stole their lives on that fateful morning. On the night of May the 29th, 2012, Sarah Tender was on her way to pick up her friend, Chastity Thornell. She would stop her vehicle on the side of Washington Pike in North Knoxville after running out of gas. Sarah called her friend to let her know what happened. Thornell had no vehicle, so family acquaintance Mason Edwards agreed to give her a ride. Before long, they delivered a gallon of gas to Sarah, but it wasn't enough to get the vehicle started. Nelson Soto, who lived nearby, would come to Sarah's aid. He had gasoline stored in his shed and he was happy to help. Mason Edwards would leave moments later. 22-year-old University of Tennessee honors graduate Curtis Scott Harper was heading home after drinking with his friends at a pub called The Hill. Harper's 2004 Silver Ford Explorer rode along a dark, narrow portion of Washington Pike, which was mostly straight and surrounded by residential dwellings on both sides. With Nelson Soto's help, Sarah Tender's vehicle was finally running again. To show her gratitude, Chastity gave Mr. Soto a hug. And at that moment, Curtis Harper spotted a car directly in front of him. He swerved in hopes of missing the disabled vehicle, but he could not. He heard and felt the impact and stopped at the next intersection to inspect his vehicle for damage but he did not return to the scene. There was nothing anyone could do to save Nelson Soto, Chastity Thornell, or her unborn baby. The impact of Harper's Ford Explorer was deadly and undiscerning. Nelson Soto's body was found 20 to 30 feet from the front of Sarah Tender's vehicle and wounds were visible on his body. Chastity Thornell had a large wound to her abdomen. Her insides were half out of her stomach and half lying on the pavement. Her hips and legs were twisted and broken. A tiny fetus, Chastity's baby, was found underneath Mr. Soto's body. It had been ripped from its mother's womb. 
KPD Sergeant Stanley Cash had worked 500 or 600 crash scenes, but this one was the worst he had ever seen. Sarah Tinder was unharmed physically, but she would never overcome the burden of living through that tragic night. Her statements to police and evidence from the scene would lead authorities to Curtis Scott Harper. He would make a futile attempt to destroy evidence by washing his vehicle, but it was too little, too late. As soon as prosecutors obtained an indictment, Curtis Harper turned himself in. During the lead up to the trial, multiple lawsuits would be filed against Curtis Harper, his parents, and the hill where he had allegedly consumed alcohol. Chastity's mother would file a $20 million lawsuit against multiple entities. That lawsuit included Sarah Tender as a defendant. The lawsuit blamed Tender for running out of gas despite a fuel warning light and failing to use emergency flashers. Sadly, the incident would take another life. The pressures of the trial and lawsuit, coupled with the post-traumatic impact of the fatal accident, were too much for Sarah Tender. She would take her life several months after the hit-and-run incident. Finally, the trial would get underway, and it would bring contradicting accounts as to Harper's activities before the fatal accident. Prosecutors argued that Harper was drunk by the time he left the hill and was involved in the accident. Some of his friends took the stand and suggested otherwise. The fact that Harper had a prior DUI did not help his case. The use of autopsy and crime scene photos would be a subject of contention for attorneys. Defense lawyers objected to certain photographs, claiming that they were extremely graphic and gruesome. The photographs were allowed by Knox County Criminal Court Judge Mary Beth Leibowitz. Prosecutors were playing a risky game by introducing the gory pictures, but it would pay off in the long run. Jurors would deliberate for more than six hours before returning a verdict. Curtis Scott Harper would be found guilty of three counts of vehicular homicide, DUI, reckless endangerment, leaving the scene, and tampering with evidence. Mary Leibowitz would sentence Harper to 30 years instead of the maximum of 45. She would justify that decision by saying she did not want the victim's families to suffer a judicial setback years from now. But the wheels of justice were already set in motion, and Leibowitz would partially be at fault for the setback. In November of 2015, the Tennessee Court of Criminal Appeals would rule in favor of Curtis Harper, saying that Judge Mary Beth Leibowitz was wrong for allowing the jury to see some of those gruesome photos. It concluded that the images were unnecessary for determining whether Harper was speeding, drunk, or both, and ordered a new trial. Appellate Judge John Everett Williams wrote a separate opinion scolding Leibowitz for allowing the photographs to be displayed. There would not be another trial. Curtis Harper would serve nearly three years before being released and sentenced to 10 years probation. As a part of the plea agreement, he would be prohibited from using drugs or alcohol and subject to alcohol monitoring for two years. Harper was ordered to perform 500 hours of community service. Many were outraged by the outcome with some saying that they were losing faith in the justice system. 
someone claiming to be the jury four person for the trial spoke out against the decision on Facebook, saying, you might as well spit in our face. They would go on to say that the pictures never came up during deliberations. While you may believe that this is a rare case, it unfortunately is not. 